Because as a foster kid, you know, it's very uncomfortable. I don't know where I'm going to sleep in your house. I don't know if I have a pillow. All I got my black plastic bag full of my little things. I don't know where I'm going to eat at your dinner table. I don't know if, what are you going to do if I don't like your food? Um, do I have to help you clean up? I'm scared of the dark till almost 13 years old, so my foster homes would have to realize I, don't, I like to sleep with the light on because bad things happen at night. So I have all these triggers, all these things. And so I knock on the door with Cheryl to meet my new foster mom and dad. And my, my f foster dad opens up the door. He goes, hi, Derek, how are you? And I didn't like happy people at that moment. <laughs> and I said, Psh, how, do you, how do you know my name, man? How do you know my name? He goes, whoa, you have a little attitude. And a month turned into a year. And a year turned into years. They are my mom and dad. For me, love was thicker than blood. You don't have to have the DNA to be a parent. And so they gave me something that I thrived on, which was love, which was a sense of belonging, which was security, which was validation, acknowledging me. And yes, I had all these behavioral problems, but... They never gave up on me. They knew that I was a little kid somewhere in that, that body, that, that I was an angry kid, but there was a nice, loving, compassionate, understanding, empathetic kid in there. And you know, I've learned that the greatest investment in this life is not my bank account, is not my car, is not my 401k. My greatest investment is my children. They're the greatest investment. And what happened is how I transformed was the, both these foster parents who were teachers, they invested in me. And they said, wow, he is really smart. He is a sponge. It's just that I needed somebody to work with me and not just house me or keep me in a closet. So my life transformed. At 18 years old, I got my make or break moment where all of a sudden I realized that I could take responsibility for the direction of my life. That my past, I was never going to let my past infect my future. That my past is not meant to confine me. My past is not meant to define me. My past is meant to refine me. And every day I was paying the price for my parents' mistakes. But I had to learn that I wasn't going to let 0 to 18 control the next 80 years of my life. That I was never going to let a weakness destroy my greatness. That it wasn't about my IQ, it was about my I will. 